Can you kill the lights? All right, it's another episode of Kill the Lights Podcast, PH, and uh, this is Joey D, and jo- I'm joined by my buddy Carl de Mesa, and today we're going to be talking about The Crow, uh, mainly because it is the 25th anniversary since this uh, cult film was released. It it's was been, released in uh, 1994, and uh, of course... It's been that long. It's been that long. Uh, the, the film was directed by uh, Alex Proyas of... Uh, you were telling me of what... Dark uh, City. Dark later City Later cult fame. film. Yeah, and uh, it was based on the 1989 comic book, which mm-hmm. was written by uh, James O'Barr. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, basically, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful story about uh, love, revenge, and all things gothic. People uh, getting killed pe- and getting resurrected. Resurrected. <laughs> uh, um, again, this it didn't do too well uh, sir, at the box office and in terms of you know uh, sales and whatnot. But The Crow is regarded as a masterpiece uh, not just by uh, you know people uh, into goth and whatnot, but by musicians alike. Because mm-hmm. the central character Eric Draven was a musician, uh, played by Brandon Lee, uh, the late Brandon Lee, mm-hmm. and um, the film starts off that uh, on Devil's Night, it is the night before Halloween, October thirtieth. Mm-hmm. Eric Draven, his fiance Shelley, uh, is uh, uh, they're both murdered. And Shelly mm-hmm. uh, got the worst of it because she was raped, beaten, then murdered. Yes. And um, Eric as well was uh, kind of over overkilled in terms of yeah, they he was shot, but then uh, they threw him out the window. They bro. threw him out the window. <laughs> he took a swan dive out the window. Yeah. And um, again, uh, the myth is uh, sometimes when somebody dies and he has mm-hmm. unfinished business, mm-hmm. a crow will co- will come and take his soul. And uh, resurrect him mm-hmm. so he can finish whatever needs to be dealt mm-hmm. with. In this case, Eric Draven uh, takes revenge upon uh, Michael Wincott's crew. Uh, all his killers. All his killers. Mm-hmm. Uh, TNT, uh, Skank, Skank yeah. T Bird, and. Uh, I think they're all up? in all like seven people yeah. in that crew. The, yeah, the crew was, uh, it was four people actually. It was Tintin. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun boy, fun boy, yeah. yes, Michael Massey, yeah, T Bird and uh, a skank, and uh, their leader, uh, who was played by Michael Wincott. Uh, mm-hmm. What was his name? Top Dollar, Top Dollar, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, um, the unique thing is, uh, they were jo- the, the the gang was joined by Bai Ling, uh, sort of like oh, uh, always an awesome actor to be uh, involved in the movie, exactly. She was weird sort of like woman. a weird woman, she was she was into witchcraft, and uh, she, I remember the eyeballs, exactly. She uh, would always take the the, the eyeballs of her victims mm-hmm. uh, to, to look into the future and uh, basically she was Michael Wincott's uh, right hand woman she, a sister not, apparently uh, and sister yeah who he'd make out with occasionally occasionally <laughs> all in the family I guess anyway the the I guess the biggest charm of the film of The Crow is all of the scenes were shot at night yeah mostly shot at night and then how that impacted filmmaking afterwards because um, the cinematographer and the director Alex Proyas had somehow made all those night scenes beautiful. Beautiful. Um, because usually, like, it, uh, arguably it was dark at certain times. You couldn't see you couldn't, certain It was uh, the 90s, details. bro. Come on. But, uh, dude. Um, Filmmaking technology. Again, uh, especially when it rained. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were so many textures in the movie, not to mention the Robert Smith-like makeup of the crow. Yes. Like uh, when Brandon Lee's character, Eric Draven, was re- resurrected, the first thing he got, the first things he got uh, mm-hmm. as soon as he got uh, was resurrected from the dead was one, the wedding ring, mm-hmm. and number two, the electric guitar. Yes. <laughs> Still an awesome solo on that rooftop, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so basically, as once uh, Eric Draven is resurrected, he starts offing all of the members of the gang. In creative ways. In very creative ways. And he'd always leave a mark, uh, a stamp or a mark, uh, which crow. was an yeah. image of the crow, yeah. which was an outline of the crow. And uh, until uh, until a lot of people started to notice, including one beat cop, which was played by Ernie Hudson, mm-hmm. who became mm-hmm. the crow's sort of He's an ally. ally. Yeah. Uh, and... Because uh, apparently Ernie Ari- Ari- Hudson's character, he was there with Shelly until she died. Yeah, uh, held her hand. Held her hand at the and, hospital and comforted yeah. um, their their common friend, uh, a young, uh, a really young girl, a really uh, young girl, the friend of the couple. 
Exactly. Yeah. Um, again, um, there are so many great things to say about this movie. Um, number one, the soundtrack. Oh, one of yes. the best soundtracks of all one time. One of the best curated. Um, Let's mention some of those yeah, artists Featuring here, uh, artists like Helmet, featuring The Cure. The Cure. Nine Inch Nails. Yes. They did a... a Stone re- Temple Pilots. Yeah. Dead Souls with Nine Inch Nails. Nine Inch Nails, they did a revised version of Joy Division's Dead, Dead Souls. Souls. And then... Uh, uh, who Big did, who MT, I think Stone Temple Pilots um, Stone Temple won Pilots. Uh, MTV Award with Big MT for that soundtrack. Exactly, and uh, even uh, even like a cult uh, 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 musicians uh, and bands like uh, Machines of Loving Machines Grace of Loving there. Grace, yeah, and uh, a lot of like really really impressive stuff. And then there was a very light hearted uh, towards the end, the anthem, right? Yeah, it was Jane Sibbery. Uh, Jane Sibbery with It Can't Rain All the Time, which yeah. is, of course, a line by a- Eric Draven. And, uh, yeah, again, uh, the music really helps with this. Um, the second Crow, uh, not as great a film, but the the second soundtrack also was pretty impressive, uh, yeah. I must say. It uh, kind of got progressively more awful as the Crow sequels yeah. seem were also cursed by, yeah. <laughs> by somehow. And by the way, of course... The Crow is um, has an unofficial title in Hollywood as one of the most cursed, if not the most cursed, movie ever. Yeah, um, of course, be the biggest uh, the biggest uh, blow to the film, of course, mm-hmm. was eight days uh, before shooting wrapped up. Uh, the lead the character, Brandon Lee, uh, the lead actor, mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, due to a, 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 a series of snafus in the loading of the firearms. Uh, yeah, apparently. apparently he was shot uh, yeah. and he died uh, before before filming was ever completed. Uh, but there were also a lot of other stories of of, of equipment burning down. Yeah, uh, a guy members, getting electrocuted. A member, members yeah. of the staff, uh, you know, falling victim to various yeah, just onsets. things that you know shouldn't happen to veteran production people. Exactly. So, um, of again, the, garnering the title, one of the most cursed films ever in Hollywood. Uh, it did wonders for the imagination as well. <laughs> to you, Joey, what was the most? Because to me, it still resonates to this day. The power and the uh, well, at, to that uh, at that time, the the filmmaking technology wasn't very up to par, right? Yeah, but you know, I I, I guess the timelessness of this film is basically it still is a love story. Yeah. Um, I, I guess that's at why it heart. appeals to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But the way that it was treated is again the gothic imagery, mm-hmm. um, the shooting at night, all the characters, night, with the criminals, the characters, and the way that it was unabashedly violent. There you go. Yeah, yeah that's it. It, it. it it definitely pushed a lot of buttons, and uh, there was it also showed um, a very very unique point of view about death mm-hmm. because again mm-hmm. uh, it was Devil's Night. And it was a time in the 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 future that people didn't really care so much about crime, mm-hmm. and people didn't weren't easily shocked at mm-hmm. what was happening around the city because of the grunge era. I guess. But then again, at the end of the film, it did show the triumph of love over evil. Yeah, I think that's it. And taking that love into a very extreme kind of way. You're familiar, of course, Joey, with the story of uh, Ulysses, um, Orpheus and Eurydice. Yeah. Right? Um, so he goes to hell, takes, uh, tries to take her back home. I think that a part of that power in that narrative is imbued in the crow, except in reverse, that yeah. you can now take revenge or fulfill your mission of avenging your loved one through the auspices of the crow god. Yeah. Uh, a lot, a lot of it is again very romantic. Mm-hmm. Um, I it, agree. It's, it's a very romantic film. Um, the reason why we actually featured it today is because it is the 25th anniversary uh, since it's uh, Imagine showing that, uh, How long uh, that it's long. Been. And the funny thing is, if you watch that movie now, it'll still hold up. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't look old as much, except for, of course, maybe the 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 quality the quality or, of the film. Uh, yeah, the so film. they should maybe put out a remastered version. Yeah, um, but other than that, the story holds. Uh, d- this holds definitely timeless. A lot of references of uh, rock and roll. Uh, I, I loved that Eric Draven's band was called Hangman's Joke. Hangman's, <laughs> Hangman's Joke. Hangman's it was the, I was joke. like, that was the most awesome band name ever. It's so tongue-in-cheek and, goth. Yeah, and then um, the, one of the one of the scenes in the movie. Uh, he made his uh, presence felt to 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 their friend Shelley, uh, to their young friend uh, mm-hmm. by you know a play as she was playing 
one of the records, the vinyl records of Hangman's Joke, Eric Draven made his presence felt yeah. because the needle s- skipped and Skinny just skip. kept on. Uh, mm-hmm. it, the phrase, it can't rain all the time, was just uh, going mm-hmm. on repeat. And I thought that was pretty clever. And uh, a lot of the dialogue is almost... Uh, I it's don't almost want, cheesy, man. Yeah, I don't want to say it, but was, it's it, not... it was poetic. No. But no. he did talk in uh, what appeared to be like very cryptic messages. Very cryptic and very like... Like it's almost funny. Yeah, it's but almost delivered. funny. But again, it, because of the romanticization yeah. of what he was, the, the shit that yeah. he had been through, and the, you know, the, the pain of losing a loved one... Mm-hmm. Um, I Probably think if anybody re- else had delivered those lines, Joey, like if it would be fine, a less a less uh, like uh, skilled actor than Brandon Lee. Yeah, um, and, and of course, uh, you know the the sad thing about Brandon Lee's passing was he had a string of like really bad movies before this. Yeah, and I think this would have catapulted his career. Everybody says that in Hollywood that after Showdown in Little Tokyo. Uh, just playing second fiddle to Dolph Rundgren. This yeah. was going to be his breakthrough movie as an Asian American leading man. I mean, in 1994, come on, uh, to finally step out of the shadow of his father, Bruce Lee. Yeah, who was uh, also uh, whose career was also cut short. Due at 32 to, uh, years old, apparently, yeah. 20 years to the day. So it was the Lee family curse, supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. Apparently. I mean, that's not fact. It's not fact. Uh, but we're all speculating here. Yeah. Um, Brandon was 27, by the way. He was 27, so that it's makes part him part of the 27, of the 27 Club. club. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, terrific acting on by everyone. Like even this, the little girl. I mentioned her name was Shelly. Uh, that was wrong. Uh, her name was Sarah. Sarah. Sorry, I got okay. I got confused. Uh, Sarah had excellent acting. Yeah. Uh, Ernie Hudson. Uh, I think she went on to become a... It's hard to take Ernie Hudson seriously, seriously because, because of the Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters thing. But here, uh, exceptional acting yeah. here. I think it's a directing thing, Joey. And uh, one of my favorite... Um, one of my favorite uh, villains of all time. Uh, again, the character played by uh, Michael Wincott. Mm-hmm. Um, top dollar. Uh, one of my favorite... Very uh, aptly villains. named. Very over-the-top, like, acting as a villain. Like, you know, I have this super straightened hair. I kiss my yep. sister. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and you know, the creativity, again, the the, the scenes where in uh, Eric Draven exacts his revenge. Very creative. I mean, um, I remember my favorite scene uh, mm-hmm. with uh, Fun Boy. Fun Boy um, before he shot uh, yeah, uh, Eric Draven, right? He 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 takes all the because Fun Boy was a hopeless drug addict. Yes. He takes all the needles yeah. and stabs him in the chest with all of them, you know, in the shape of a crow. Yeah, and then uh, he proceeds that. to go to the bathroom, and uh, that's where uh, Sarah's mom, Shelly, mm-hmm. who was going out with Fun Boy. Oh, that's Shelly. Where okay. wherein he uh, he takes her arm and reverse it pumps out, pumps all, the out drugs, all the drugs while say while delivering that line that really immortal line mm-hmm. um, mother is the name of god in the, 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 the lips of every child oh sends chills like, up your was, spine i was like that that's an awesome scene yeah. and uh, you know how he tied uh, t-bird into a car mm-hmm. uh, a burning car with a gasoline mm-hmm. and uh, t-bird was apparently realizing that he was going to die just said over and over and abash the the devil so, stood some his poetry basically Eric Draven's poetry exactly. and lyrics for Hangman's joke. So um again this is this is like one of those films wherein uh, you watch it again after a number of years mm-hmm. and then you recite the lines with the actors. Its total uh, resonating power to me is amazing because people still cosplay as the crow. Exactly. Teenagers these days who have seen it for the first time still experience the same thing that we did way back when. And the best thing about it as well, I mean, despite the the sometimes uh, the, the, the occasional cheesiness of the lines and whatever, the best thing about it is not really a happy ending kind of film. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's I not. mean, he did exact his revenge, but the thing is all that meant was he could die in peace. In peace, yeah. And um, no one came back after that. After serving his purpose... Mm-hmm. He re- he had to move on. Exactly. And then, uh, yeah, end of story. I mean, it was very simple. Yeah. It wasn't complicated. It didn't try to be complicated. It didn't try to be overtly scary. Uh, and at the root of it, I think the storyline is very simple. Very simple. That's um, why Hollywood, I think, has tried to reboot it again and again, again. and again. Thank God they haven't. They haven't, though. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think you can. Certain times, apparently, like Jason Momoa was attached to it. 
Um, it was that guy, Rocket Raccoon. Um, yeah. Bradley Cooper was attached to it. Yeah. There have been numerous talks numerous about talks. resurrecting the film, but uh, just like the, the the second and the third uh, parts of There's the There's a fourth, crew, I think. Like, there was a fourth with Edward Furlong. Yeah, I think. still awful. Ta- uh, Tara Reid and Edward Furlong, yeah. which was so Imagine horrible. Imagine that. Just so bad. I think uh, nothing uh, stands uh, as tall as the first Crow movie. And a lot of people are going to get uh, a chance to watch that. Uh, although not everyone, because ASC Toys and Collectibles, uh, in cooperation with Adults Only Radio, they're going to hold a very, very special screening of uh, The Crow, uh, the 25th anniversary uh, by invite only special screening happening at the My, at the My Cinema over at Greenbelt 3. Um, the Greenbelt Cinemas, and uh, it's just fifty people. Mm, uh, I want to be part of those yeah. fifty people. <laughs> and fifty people are gonna watch the crew all over together. There's a lot of amazing prizes. Uh, the first prize is, of course, the Hot Toys uh, mm-hmm. action, fi- action figure. Uh, fa- action how, figure. How tall is that? How it's large a is that? Scale. Oh my God! So, I'm Brandon Lee sitting on that chair, right? Uh, no, it's actually Brandon Lee walking with a crow on oh, his shoulder no, with a that guitar. That's the poster. Yeah. And you know, Hot Toys. Uh, if you're a fan of toys and collectibles, Hot Toys. They're they're officially licensed by mm-hmm. the films to make the toys. So everything, everything up to right. the guitar, the strings, the frets, everything is correct. So that's the grand prize. But we're also giving away so many other stuff. We're giving away NECA action figures. Oh, uh, nice. We're also giving away official Crow card holders. These are official Crow merchandise. They're licensed. And uh, we're giving away mugs, anything you can think of. We're giving away uh, official uh, Hangman's Joke guitar picks. Wow. Uh, we're giving away to everyone who's there. And again, it's by invite only, but I know Adults Only Radio will be giving away a pair of tickets. You uh, better get on that contest. So that happens every Saturday, yeah. 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Jam at 8.3. Uh, but yeah, again, if I were to rate this film, uh, surprisingly... <laughs> From 1994, uh, bro. From 1994, and uh, you hosting this show are two writers who are known to be very critical about a lot of stuff. But I would rate this film a 10 out of 10. It's, mm-hmm. de- it definitely makes the list of my all-time favorite movies. If you wow. have a chance it's to a watch score. it yourself, do watch it. Um, I think it, it. the main reason why I like it is, aside from changing the way the landscape of films were made during that mm-hmm. time... Uh, it was one of the rare successes wherein uh, a comic book story was made into a movie. And I think after this one, J. O. James Obar never actually hit it big with any other With series, any other right? title, yeah. yeah. Uh, this was, was, this was his masterpiece, yeah. yeah. And uh, of course, the balance is very, very, uh, very, very, it's very, very well balanced. I mean, mm-hmm. you get a little humor, mm-hmm. you get a little uh, dark, gothic, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're rooting for the hero of the story, but also you're sort of rooting for the the enemy. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, it's the total anti-hero movie. Uh, in no way was he a superhero. No. He was just an ordinary guy trying to do extraordinary things. For me, you can kind of really see how this was going to be the breakout film of Brandon in terms of just his charisma. And it's no joke to say that he was going to be a star after this one, especially since... He was in the lead and everything was going on for him. A lot of things changed after this, even after his death. Like in Hollywood, they apparently eventually levied for safer gun and firearms handling on yeah. movie sets. Because you, did you know he was set to be married like two weeks after he had wrapped up shooting of The Crow? Yeah. So his fiance, uh, driven by sorrow and the uh, motivation to not let anybody get shot the same way again. Exactly. Levied for that. So afterwards, Alex Perez went on to do Dark City and he he took his aesthetics, those dark aesthetics of The Crow that he had started there and levied it into that movie, which also became a cult classic. Yeah. That's what I love about it. It's, uh, I remember reading something that that, that because of what happened to Brandon Lee, Mm -hmm. um, it seemed that uh, with every frame of the movie, he was haunting. He was haunting the yeah. next ones. Uh, how did they finish it again with CGI and another? I episode? think a lot of it was CGI and uh-huh. uh, a double. Uh, yeah. Mainly because, because he had already shot a lot of film, right? Exactly, and uh, you know, I mean, corpse paint, long hair. It's it's not mm-hmm. the hardest thing to replicate, mm-hmm. especially in the action scenes. Yeah, and like whatnot. long shots, probably. Exactly, but uh, you know, um, again, I do agree with it. It was. 
it was one of the first few movies that had an impact on me that I was watching and rooting for this guy mm-hmm. on the screen. Mm-hmm. But then again, knowing he was dead. And he was uh, going to die, obviously. Yeah. Like, what, <laughs> what was he going to do? To live aptly ever after as a crime-fighting crow? <laughs> yeah. So again, uh, the ultimate anti-hero movie for me. Again, I, I give it a 10 out of 10. Anybody uh, who hasn't seen it really should see it. Because, yeah. you know, Joey doesn't give out those 10s. I don't give out perfect 10s yeah. unless we're talking like Slayer. Or Smash, <laughs> but, but the crow is one of those things that... And you know what? It, it I, I, I'll be damned if it... Even for young people that it bores them... Um, the pace is well. It, it's, it's not such it's a not great boring. pace. Yeah, yeah at all. Um, you'll keep glued and um, yeah, um, and one one to add to the collection definitely sure. of '90s movies. So again, uh, July thirteenth, uh, it is uh, adults only radio and mm-hmm. ASC toys co- toys and collectibles will be uh, doing a, a special twenty fifth year anniversary screening of the crow over at greenbelt uh, my cinema so but if you don't get a chance to watch it there I, i'm sure you can mm-hmm. find it uh, you have other creative ways to find it yeah. uh please do give it a a watch and uh yeah enjoy hopefully it won't be uh you know too stormy out there but yeah. hey can't rain all the time can't rain all the time <laughs> uh yeah so this is, has been a uh, joey d and my buddy carl de Mesa for kill the kill the lights podcast ph you can follow us on facebook at kill the lights ph and uh on instagram as well so yeah we hope uh you all had a good time listening to kill the lights and uh yeah hope to catch you guys soon bye <laughs>